Hey all, I've been experimenting with a new open source app called Rapid Raw. It's basically a lightweight version of, well, it's inspired by Adobe Lightroom and it's available for Linux, Mac and Windows. It's um, developed by an 18 year old photographer and developer from Switzerland. So uh, he's a bit of a boy genius. Anyhow, I had to play with it the other day very briefly for like 10 minutes and my first thoughts were that the sliders were too aggressive but um this software is obviously in its infancy and you've got an 18 year old developer against a billion dollar company so but i want to keep an eye on this software because i feel that linux is getting closer to becoming a viable platform for professional work whether it's photography or print inkscape are currently in the process of adding CMYK support and all we re really need now is a sort of Lightroom equivalent. There is Darktable which is very powerful but it's a bit too heavy for your average user so um, yeah I'm intrigued by this so I thought I would do a side-by-side -side comparison using the same sliders to see the different effects it has on the photo and how different they are and where I think it's going so <clears throat> I'm going to start with the exposure on this so let's bring this up by say a plus one do the same again on the Lightroom so plus one is different on each but I want to see how far you can push rapid raw in comparison to the Lightroom version, so if I crank the exposure up on this one, if you see on the dress and the window, the processing in Rapid Raw seems very aggressive and contrasty. I mean, it's very exposed here, but if you look at the background here compared to do you know what it's not actually as bad as i thought it was <coughs> surprising we crank this up a little bit more i think it's just the numbering's different so when you so let's see let's push this all the way up to 2.9 you do lose the when you make them about the same brightness it does blow the window out a little bit more. Generally, the exposure has a bit more of a contrasty effect. So, right, let's reset these and go. Let's just make it to a respectable amount on each. So, very similar. Um, the thing is, if you. I've got the brightness of the bride looking the same but if you look at the window it's more crushed and contrasty like in the Lightroom version you can still see the leaves where as in the rapid wall one it's crushed out already so and the actual Lightroom version is a bit brighter so my initial thoughts are kind of right it's just a bit more contrasted exposure slider and if you look at the wood in the background here as well it's got more contrast in rapid raw and all the dress actually if you're looking at the dress all the all the shadows is completely blown out now i'm using different numbers here 1.5 in exposure in lightroom and rapid raw is at 2.71 but that is visibly a very similar brightness but I think Lightroom's using the equivalent of 1.5 stops where I think Rapid Raw is not. It's just doing like a, I don't know if it's a percentage or however it calculates the maths. But anyway, let's, have to, let's pull this back a little bit so we can still see a bit more of the dress. But yeah, no, it's, it really does crush out the details. So to get the dress back, it's got to be quite a bit darker. Anyway, let's pull up the shadows see the effect and control that has and the effect and control shadows and light when we seem to have a lot more scope 
here as you nearly max if you do the max shadows here it's very weak actually the shadow slider it doesn't work very well at all so now let's go you can't even replicate the look at all but let's go to the whites and okay so the color science is quite a bit inferior i mean this is all from open source so i imagine uh the guy that created this he goes by the name of cyber tim on can maybe look at different libraries and see if there's different assets to do the exposure i mean i'm not a programmer but i'd imagine with a bit of searching and tweaking he might be able to get this to perform better but as you can see the menus are all in the same place which was what someone would want who is moving from lightroom to open source the main attraction of rapid raw for me is that it works on linux that would be the main use case so if it could get good enough then it would help people transition to linux i am um, checking on linux every three to five years and i'd love to use it because of the versatility of it but there's never enough sort of creative and publishing software for what i need anyway let's go to the color tab something i noticed the other day in this was that the saturation and vibrance seem to be back to front so i'm going to crank up the vibrance here yeah if you see here it's affecting the skin tones and the main thing with the vibrant slider is that it'll it'll boost the colors and protect skin tones like if you see us do it in lightroom it does affect the skin tones but it's nowhere near as much it's more the background colors and it, it's very more subtle on the skin tones but i noticed the other day on the saturation slider that seemed to well i don't know actually maybe a little bit if you use it a bit more gently it did let's do that versus vibrance yeah i think the saturation slider is actually slightly less aggressive in rapid raw than the vibrance so in a way it feels like they're back to front or maybe it's just not a very good asset that's currently been connected but um it's got all the stuff you would want in there on first impressions like the mid-tone shadows highlights the ability to edit them or man manipulate the colors but um it doesn't from what i can see have a white balance eyedropper yet but it's been worked on all the time so let's go down to detail <clears throat> it's got a haze here Yeah, so I mean, in its current state, it looks like Lightroom and all the sliders are named the same and kind of do the same thing, but they don't work nowhere near as good. So at its current state, it would not be a viable replacement for doing any kind of professional work, in my opinion. But I'm saying that to kind of antagonize cyber timon to find some better color science because i think the idea is great and um it'd be brilliant to have an open source alternative as mentioned earlier and i would be happy to test releases for him if he wanted me to to help it improve and develop but yeah it looks like Lightroom it acts like Lightroom but it does not it's really if you imagine Lightroom being a Ferrari then this is a Toyota M2 with a Ferrari body kit at the moment but I don't want to be harsh because 
<clears throat> I think it's a brilliant idea as previously mentioned, but it, yeah, it's going to need a lot of work to pull people away from Lightroom at the moment. So that's my initial thoughts. I haven't really gone any further because um, I've got the same kind of feeling that I had when I tried it the first time, which was, oh, it's a great idea. I can't wait to try that. And then when you actually use the sliders, you'd be like, oh, yuck, it don't really work very well. But um, yeah, he's, um, if you are interested in supporting his project, assuming he is taking support, or I'd imagine he would be, his name is Cyber Timon on GitHub. And he is a passionate developer and photographer from Switzerland, driven by the challenge of building efficient, impactful software. His journey is fueled by love of machine learning. And he originally created this to because um, he wanted a lightweight version of Lightroom. So anyhow, that's all for now. And um, hopefully in a few releases time, I can do another video saying how much better it is. It feels like a software that I need to check in on in like six months or a year. And I imagine it'll be far better then. But um, yeah, it, I hope people do support this project anyway. So that's all for now. All the best.